Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about what seems to be a completely new class of objects, something we didn't really expect to discover, and it's something that actually resembles a typical global cluster. Now, today I actually wanted to discuss these global clusters and also these new discoveries, because it might redefine how we look and how we see galaxies in the future. Now, first of all, globular clusters are these really bright objects that kind of resemble basically very, very big stars that you sort of see around the galaxy. There is one right there, and we can actually jump in and take a look at what all of this looks like. So, this is what a typical globular cluster would resemble. Although, here is what an actual picture from Hubble telescope looks like. And so these are very, very dense collections of different stars, and in most cases these are extremely ancient objects. And we also use them for a lot of different types of cosmological calculations. For example, we know that there is a relationship between number of global clusters and the number of galactic collisions. The more clusters, the more likely the galaxy collided with various types of smaller galaxies. We also believe that some of them might be related to the cores of ancient smaller dwarf galaxies. So this is basically a kind of a leftover of some of the previous galactic collisions. In this simulation we can even take a look at one of the planets located in this region and take a look at the night skies in the middle of a typical global cluster. So if you were to stand on the surface of this planet, the night skies here would be pretty remarkable a lot brighter and a lot more populated than anything in our own solar system. And that's because the stars here are relatively close to one another. But apart from galactic collisions, there's also a correlation with the size of the central black hole, there is a correlation with the amount of dark matter, and we can also use them to discover a lot of other properties of a typical galaxy. Like, we know that the Andromeda galaxy has approximately four times more global clusters than the Milky Way. Milky Way has around 150 to maybe 158, whereas the Andromeda has close to 500. And that in itself means that Andromeda experienced a lot more different types of collisions. And the M87 galaxy that hosts this beautiful black hole has close to about 13,000 of them. So understanding how this relationship affects galaxies and how we can study galaxies by using global clusters has always been sort of important for us. But the thing is, we didn't really realize that some global clusters seem to be in their own class. As a matter of fact, they seem to be connected to the galaxy where they're located directly. Which is pretty much what the scientists behind this paper you can find in the description below address in their study and try to analyze using these two specific global clusters known as Liller 1 or maybe Lyler 1 and Terzan 5. With Terzan 5 being one of the most famous global clusters. Now the thing about Liller 1 is that it's actually kind of difficult for us to see. It's located on the other side of the gas cloud that essentially represents the Milky Way galaxy center. And because of this, it's extremely dim. It's very, very challenging for us to try to see any sort of detail of this cluster. Even trying to find out how many stars there are here is extremely challenging. But that's of course if you use optical light. You could use other frequencies. Even though this object is about 10,000 times dimmer than a typical global cluster in the galaxy because of the dust, by using infrared light observations we can pretty much see everything as if it was completely unobscured by anything. And so this observatory known as Gemini South, located in Chile, was used for this particular observation. And one of the major discoveries here was that it seems that this is indeed a completely different class of objects compared to a typical cluster simply because of the age of different stars located in here. It seems that this was created in at least two major starburst or star formation events, with the first one being almost exactly the same as the age of the galaxy. And the first stars here were formed around 12 billion years ago, and that's basically when we believe Milky Way was also developing at the same time. But at the same time, it seems to have a second period of star generation that happened around 4.5 billion years ago, which is surprisingly around the same time when the Sun was created. But surprisingly, there is also another population of stars that's much younger, anywhere from 1 to 3 billion years, 
that was created on top of the older generation, and this is remarkably similar to the other global cluster known as Terzan 5. In other words, these two objects seem to be extremely similar to one another as if they were part of the same family. Yet they are different from other global clusters which normally only have a single type of stars that were created around the same time. And for this reason, the scientists in this paper coined a new term for these types of objects. They refer to them as bulge fossil fragments. In other words, they're still global clusters, but they're really more related to the ancient Milky Way galaxy itself. They're kind of like the ancient bones of the galaxy when it was still forming and developing. Something that stayed with the Milky Way for the past few billion years. And so because of this, both of these objects are essentially like stellar relics. They are these ancient objects that existed for as long as the Milky Way was around and most likely were the foundation of the galaxy itself. Probably formed from the initial starburst activity that happened in certain region of the early Milky Way galaxy. And though in general they still resemble a typical global cluster, their fundamental difference is in the actual stars themselves. Here the age of stars is going to be very different from the age of stars in a typical global cluster that will normally have them around the same period. Which to some extent also suggests that maybe there is a different origin story to both of them, although that's not something we can prove right now. But I guess what's interesting about these objects is that they also do somehow possess an ability to have another starburst region or another starburst event inside of them. And that's something that we don't really understand how they're able to do just yet. But another important finding here is that since both of these objects are more or less located around the central bulge of the Milky Way, the scientists in this paper believe that they are somehow responsible for the formation of the central bulge. They do believe that some kind of a foundation is formed by these unusual cluster formations that then somehow leads to the formation of the bulge itself and guides the stars in this region to stay in orbit around the central regions of the galaxy preventing them from flying farther away. This also of course implies that a lot of the history of the Milky Way galaxy can be discovered by studying at least these two global clusters or these two fossil fragments and by essentially identifying various types of stars present in each of these clusters we might be able to see the history of collisions and the history of growth of the Milky Way throughout the 12 or so billion years of its existence. But the previous assumption about these two clusters was that they were most likely just the cores of ancient dwarf galaxies or basically that they were disrupted dwarf galaxies themselves. But because of the similarity in ages and the types of stars in these two objects, this would be extremely difficult to explain unless both of them came from exactly the same dwarf galaxy and that would be much more difficult to explain. And the next step here would be to try to identify other similar objects. For example, we know that M54, which is yet another cluster but this one is actually on the outskirts of the Milky Way and most likely belongs to the galaxy known as Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy, also seems to contain the stars of two different populations. So essentially ancient stars that are slightly older than 12 billion years and also younger stars as well. But in this case it's probably an object that came from a completely different galaxy, most likely from Sagittarius Dwarf. And then we have Omega Centauri that also seems to possess stars of different age. But the age here is different from all of the other clusters I mentioned. So it could be also connected to some other galaxy, currently we're not really sure. Either way though, it seems that there are definitely different types of objects out there that do seem to resemble clusters. In this case though, these do seem to be more fossils of ancient galaxies, not so much a regular type of a cluster we usually find in the middle of a galaxy. Which is now, at least for now, the scientists are going to be referring to these as bulge fossil fragments. Until we learn more about them, we don't really exactly know what else to call them or what classification to give them. But they will definitely help us answer a lot of questions about the history of the Milky Way and of course other galaxies as well. But until we learn more about them, that's really all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.